Good afternoon, everyone. I hope you can all hear me. Uh, thank you for being at our final digital UCG session of this week, uh, which is an uh, interactive seminar uh, given by one of our uh, lecturers, uh, Adriana Matos. Uh, the theme is, can we eradicate human disease? Um, with me here today is also my colleague Iris. Uh, we will be monitoring the chat box in case you have any questions. Uh, feel free to drop them in. And without further ado, here is Adriana. Hello, everybody. I hope you can all uh, hear and see me. Hello. Uh, my name is Adriana, as Marika said. Yes, good. My name is Adriana Matos, as uh, Marika introduced you, uh, me to you. And I am a lecturer at UCG. I am originally from Brazil, but I live in the Netherlands since 2004, so I came here as a student, as a master's student at the University of Groningen, and then I did my PhD, and then I decided to stay because I really uh, love Groningen, and I'm, work at, I'm working at UCG since 2018. Okay, before we start, I would like you to uh, let me know, let everybody know how you're feeling today. So if you please put on the chat um, an emoji on how you're feeling today, for example, like this. Okay, I did with the moderators. Can you please let me know if you're happy, if you're tired, if you're sleepy? Can you please let me know? Vanessa, Vanessa is feeling happy. That's nice. Hi, Sanska, Maria. If you can also maybe type from where you are watching us. Maybe you are you are in the Netherlands or outside the, of the Netherlands. Munich. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, Malta. I heard Malta is great, Georgia. China, great. India, and one in the Netherlands. Okay, great. Great to see you all here. So uh, let's start then. Los Angeles, are you sleepy? What time is it in Los Angeles? Is it very early in the morning or what time is it in Los Angeles? And 8 a.m. and in China? China is also 8 a.m.? No. <laughs> 11 p.m. Vanessa, aren't you sleepy as well? <laughs> That's nice to, see, nice to see you. So today, yeah, <laughs> I sleep at 10 maximum, so I know how you feel. So let's start today. Um, I prepared something for you for about one hour. We are going to have a break in between, so don't worry if you need to, to get a cup of coffee or tea or water or whatever you would like to do, we are going to have a five minutes break because I know that uh, when we are online, I think we all have the experience now for almost two years, it may be a, a little bit, uh, yeah, too much when we stay for one hour nonstop in an online environment. So my question now for that we are going to try to, um, to answer today is how can we eradic eradicate a human disease. So when I talk about this, I'm talking about communicable diseases. So when we talk about eradication of a disease, the first thing that comes to mind is a communicable disease. What, what is it? What is a communicable disease? Is a, an infectious disease, is a disease that can be transmitted from person to per person or from animals to persons or from the environment to humans. So, and it is also known as infectious disease. Now, I would like you uh, to answer a question for me in the poll. What sort of living beings may cause communicable diseases in humans, infectious disease? Can you please choose one, two, three, four, five? Yes, good. Um, very good. Virus and the bacteria. Uh, Winning, somebody's two people were saying animals. Five people yet to go. 
Nobody else? Okay, let me show your responses now. This is what uh, you answered to us. But, okay, today, just because today is sunny here in Groningen, in the Netherlands, and I'm meeting you for the first time, I would like to tell you that all of you are right, okay? All, uh, from, um, all um, questions were correct. And the World Health Organization definition for infectious diseases is a disease that is caused by a pathogenic microorganisms. That means it's a, an organism that can uh, cause a disease, such as bacteria, viruses, parasites, or fungi. The disease can be spread directly or indirectly from one person to another. And here uh, are the groups of uh, living organisms that you were choosing from the list. And I said everything is correct because uh, here, as you say, we can have the category of virus. Virus can cause diseases, of course, as we all may know uh, at this moment because of the coronavirus. So here are virus, and here are some examples of diseases caused by virus, including COVID-19. We are going to talk a little bit about it today. Bacteria, here are a few examples of bacteria uh, caused by, um, disease caused by bacteria, fungi, some diseases caused by fungi, animals, especially uh, worms, and protozoans like the uh, causative agents for malaria, leishmania, trichomoniasis, and etc. So you're all correct. Very good. Another thing that is important before we start talking about the er er eradication of diseases is to get to know um, a few definitions, a few, so that we get, we, we are all in the same pages. So when we talk about a, an infectious disease, a communicable disease, uh, we talk, uh, we can uh, have different levels. We can describe the disease in a population on different levels. For example, if a certain, if a, if a certain disease is endemic, when you say the disease is endemic, it means that we are say we, we have that is that infectious disease in a specific uh, geographic area in that population. Every year the same, constant. For example, uh, I have uh, here in the Netherlands. I'm just guessing. I don't know. These are not the real numbers. Disease uh, X. Every year we have 300 cases of this disease in average. So some years 280, some years 290, 300, 310. And this doesn't change a lot over time. So then we are going to say that this region is endemic for this disease X. But if, for example, in that specific population, in that area, uh, that is an increase, a sudden increase of the number of cases of that specific disease, then we call it an epidemic. So we can have, for example, instead of an average of 300 cases per year in the Netherlands of the disease X, if we have in one year 500 cases, this is an epidemic. And if this disease is spreading to other countries or continents affecting a large number of people, then this is what we call a pandemic. It's also important to know that an outbreak is the same as an epidemic, but the geographic area is more limited. For example, if we have uh, zero cases of COVID at the University College Groningen for 10 years, and suddenly we have 10 cases, we don't have an epidemic at University College Groningen. We have an outbreak of COVID at the University College Groningen. Remember that this, uh, to have an epidemic or pandemic, it's not about um, uh, total numbers, but it's in relation to what it was before. So if we have, for example, zero cases in one year, and the year after we have two cases, we have an increase of 200% of twofold, and this is an epidemic or an outbreak, depending on the region um, you are analyzing. Uh, about communicable diseases, again, uh, in 2013, uh, the leading these are the le these were the leading causes of um, of years of life loss. Uh, sorry, in 2013. 
meaning uh, there were uh, people were dying prematurely in these countries all over the world and here in red I have a circle around diseases that are communicable that are infectious diseases in 2020 uh, since 2000 end of 2019 2020 21 we have a, a serious pandemic running all over the world I guess we are all aware of the, COVID, the situation of COVID-19 and here in this map, uh, we can view uh, the reported COVID-19 deaths uh, of the year of 2000, since they started in 2020 until August 2021. So in red, dark red, we have uh, COVID as the leading cause, number one cause of deaths uh, in these countries that are in red. And this is a bit orange, the disease was in the top five, yellow, top 10, light blue or gray, top 50, dark blue is top 100, and not in the top 100, it's a kind of lilac. I don't see, I think, any country in this situation. But these are, we had a serious pandemic, and uh, to know how many deaths have occurred because of COVID, countries need to report these deaths. So these are the reported deaths, um, by COVID-19. But we also have an estimative of total deaths, also uh, deaths that were not uh, reported due to the uh, problem in the system or political reasons or whatever. And here is more close to the real situation. So we can see that in many parts uh, of the globe, we have COVID-19 as the leading cause of death. So this is how serious the pandemic is. If I compare the number of deaths by cause in the world, I put here a, a, a graph bar from 2017. So, so far, number one cause of death all over the world for many years, many, many years, is cardiovascular diseases, is the, the, the biggest killer all over the world, followed by cancers, respiratory diseases, lower respiratory infections, etc., and etc. And here, uh, I checked the, um, the real-time data when it was happening and I just in yellow I put the numbers of deaths uh, by COVID here. Uh, I start counting here in 2020, uh, March the 5th, 2020, a bit more than 3,000 deaths were, were reported. Uh, about five months later we have already 740 41,000 deaths and in only nine to ten months not even the whole year the deaths caused by COVID were already among the top five in the world only reported deaths if we look in 2021 from 1st of January 2021 here until the end of the, the year, we have 5.44 million deaths due to COVID, only reaped deaths. Okay, it can be much more, and probably we are, we are about number two. Yes, Sanska, would you like to ask a question? Yes. If you put your microphone on. Oh, it was mis a mistake. No problem. Yes. Uh, so uh, it's about uh, number three uh, cause of death all over the world in 2021, the third uh, most common cause of death all over the world, only if we count reported deaths in 2021. About this time, I checked this morning, we are uh, 6.05 to 08 today. So uh, the, the velocity of the spreading of the deaths are decreasing, which is good because the trends on the 21st century are not that good. We know that what is going to happen a lot regarding communicable disease is that infections that were already under control or even in a way um, eliminated in several parts of the world, they will return 
they are returning and they will return and we are going to have more and more the emergency of new diseases, diseases that are jumping direct, directly from animals to us for the first time as it was the, 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 the case of COVID-19. And this can be due to the growth of the human population, poverty, inequalities where people need to live close to the wildlife, def deforestation, climate change, etc. But here today, this is not the subject of this lecture, but it's also uh, very interesting to realize that. And then if I ask you if we can eradicate a human disease, the first thing that I need to know is what eradication means. Do you know what eradication means? I don't know, Marika, are they able to, um, to write here in this? slide or not? I don't think so. Okay, could you please write uh, in the text box, uh, in the chat box? Yeah, in the box, in the chat box, what, what, when we, it's not, um, you don't need to have a right answer. I just would like to know if I say, if I say about an eradication of a disease, what does it mean in your mind? What do you think an eradication of a disease means? Could you please answer in the chat box? Please, are you all shy? Hello, everybody. Would you prefer to use the microphone? Removal, elimination, yes. Taking away the disease, good, very good. A disease that was completely removed from existence, not should you, it's a good guess, Georgia. Does it mean removal of the disease? Could it, it can be? Complete removal of the disease, yes. It, you are not wrong, the, all the answers are good. The disease not being among the population anymore, very good. I would like you, uh, you to know that to have a, a definition of erad eradication is very difficult and it's also very important. Why is it dif difficult? Because, for example, you can count it eradication when a disease is completely uh, banned, extinct from the face of the, or the population. The population is not suffering anymore. Not even a single person is suffering from that disease. But it can also mean that it's the extinction, not of the disease, but of the pathogen, of the living organ, the parasite that is causing the disease. So if you consider this, then we don't, we don't consider any disease as extinct because the parasites are not completely extinct and we are going to talk about this. So it's very important to have a definition because if we want to achieve eradication of a disease or if we want to know if we are able to achieve, we need to know what we are talking about. So the World Health Organization uh, is using a definition that was written in 1998, uh, and it's accepted for several other organizations and scientists all over the world. This is the most accepted definition. This is not the only definition, but this is the most accepted. It, it is a permanent reduction to zero of the worldwide incidence of infection caused by a specific agent as a result of deliberate efforts, meaning that we humans, we made something to make that disease disappear from the face of the planet permanently. So it's not coming back anymore, or we hope it's not coming back anymore. And this is the the goal of public health all over the world, the goal of people, you can imagine that if we have a world without all diseases or maybe without even one disease would make a difference. Let's imagine that we could, uh, we, we are going to sleep today and tomorrow we don't have COVID anymore or HIV anymore. So it's uh, the holy grail for public health. But now a question for you. I think we can answer this in the poll again. Can we eradicate a human disease? What do you think? Yes or no? It's a simple answer. Yes or no? You click yes or no, please.
good. Alexia, ever, you did not respond. Maybe you're shy. Okay, thank you. I'm going to show you a response. This is very balanced here. Some people think we can, we are able to eradicate a human disease and some other people think, oh no, we are not able to eradicate a human disease. So some people thinking positively here and some are very negative, maybe because of the situation of COVID. But what I would like to ask you, uh, if you are not so shy and you could please answer, why did you answer that? Why did you answer yes? Or why did you answer no? Do you have a reason for this? Or is just a, a kind of gut feeling that you have? Would you dare to uh, put the microphones? Or are you uh, very shy? Or in the chat box is also good. Georgia think smallpox was eradicated. And this is why you said yes. I said no because I think there will always be a portion of a mutation of the disease alive. Ever said because our population is so great that the disease can mutate faster and we could control it completely. I was going to say smallpox as well. Good. Georgia I was thinking exactly the same thing. Oh, good. Yes. Good. So, ta -da -da. let's see. Yes, we can eradicate a human disease. It is possible but it is not easy. And those of you who said no, you are also not wrong because depending on the disease, as we are going to see today, this is going maybe not to be possible as well, but we can and we did. Yes, as some of you remember very well, smallpox was the first and only human disease to be eradicated, to be banished for, from the face of the planet. It's the first and the only disease. There is also another disease that was eradicated that is uh, in the past, but this is an animal disease, a cattle disease. So it's not a human disease. Human disease, the only one to be eradicated was smallpox. And this was so great because lots of people had suffered and died by smallpox all over the, the world during many, many cents. This, is a, this, this was a disease that was killing the human population for really a long time. So it is just like COVID caused by a virus and transmitted via person to person uh, contact and saliva, saliva droplets. It's one of the most devastating diseases known to humanity so far. The mortality rate was around 30 to 35%. So meaning that if you are infected with the disease, you have 30 to 35% chances of dying. Most survivors would have deep scar marks. Here is a child with the marks of smallpox. Yeah, here, uh, this man has marks on the face, all these holes here from smallpox. It can be all over the body, but in the face where everybody can see, can be a bit embarrassed. And do you know uh, who this um, portrait is from? Who is this? It's one of the Queen Elizabeth of Victoria, I'm not sure but she was constantly painting uh, her face very white. It was then by that time, that by the, that, uh, that specific period in the history where it was a kind of fashion to paint all the face in white because what she was doing, she was covering the marks of smallpox, for example. So, but smallpox only in the 20th century killed uh, about 300 million people and remember that the population of the world was much smaller. So it was really uh, lots of deaths. The first vaccine ever produced by Jenner in 1796 was against smallpox. So the only disease that was eradicated. It was declared eradicated in 1980. The last case was in 1977, but it was declared eradicated in 1980 and it was really a uh, global uh, fought, uh, fought in a global scale in order to 
to eradicate smallpox. What we are seeing now about COVID-19, it was uh, the same for smallpox and maybe even more. It was decades and decades of putting money and political effort and everything else in order to try to eradicate smallpox. But they were very lucky because they chose smallpox to be eradicated. Lucky? I, I wouldn't say lucky, but it was based on some scientific knowledge. You don't go for something that you, if, if you cannot really eradicate, you need to try, we need to try something else. So here I have a small uh, YouTube video for five minutes. I would like you to watch. I'm going to share with you here in the screen. And after you watch, we are going to have a few minutes break. So just a minute, I'm going to share the video with you. For most of human history, medical workers sought to treat diseases or cure them. The rise of vaccination in the 19th century enhanced the potential to prevent people from contracting illnesses in the first place. But only in recent decades did it become possible to ensure that a particular disease never threatens humanity again. The story of smallpox, the first and so far the only disease to be permanently eradicated from the world, shows how disease eradication can happen and why it is so difficult to achieve. Smallpox emerged in human populations thousands of years ago as a contagious virus that spread rapidly, primarily through close face-to-face -face contact. Causing fever, aches, and rashes, it killed up to 30% of its victims and often left survivors with lifelong disfiguring scars. The devastating impact of smallpox was so great that several cultures had religious deities specifically dedicated to it. In the 20th century alone, it is estimated to have killed more than 300 million people worldwide. With the effective deployment of vaccination, the number of cases began to decrease. By seeking out infected individuals, isolating them, and vaccinating their contacts to prevent further transmission, scientists realized that the spread of the disease could be halted. In fact, because smallpox could only survive in human hosts, vaccinating all of an infected person's potential contacts would stop the virus dead in its tracks and eliminate it from that region. Once this strategy had succeeded in ridding most industrialized countries from the disease, health officials realized that eradicating it worldwide was within reach. But this was not an easy process, proving especially difficult in places suffering from poor infrastructure or civil wars. The eradication effort took decades and involved millions of people working together, from world leaders and international organizations to rural doctors and community workers. In India, one of the last strongholds of the disease, health workers visited every one of the country's 100 million households to search for cases. Through this unprecedented worldwide effort, in which even rival superpowers cooperated, smallpox was finally declared eradicated in 1980, saving approximately 40 million lives over the following two decades. There were several factors that made smallpox an ideal candidate for eradication. First, humans are essential to the smallpox life cycle. So breaking the chain of human to human transmission causes the virus to die out. In contrast, many other pathogens like Ebola or the bubonic plague can survive in animal carriers, while the bacteria that cause tetanus can even live in the soil. Secondly, Individuals infected with smallpox displayed a characteristic rash, making them easy to identify, even without a lab test. The lack of such practical diagnostic tools for diseases with nonspecific symptoms or that have long incubation periods, such as AIDS, makes their eradication more difficult. Third, the availability of a smallpox vaccine that provided immunity for five to 10 years in a single dose meant that there was an effective intervention to stop the virus from spreading. And finally, the initial success of several countries in eliminating the disease within their borders served as a proof of principle for its eradication worldwide. 
Today, the same criteria are applied to determine whether other diseases can be similarly eliminated. And even though smallpox remains the only success story thus far, several other pathogens may be next in line. Great progress has been made towards eradicating guinea worm disease simply by use of water filters. And vaccination for polio, which previously disabled hundreds of thousands of people each year, is estimated to have prevented 13 million cases of paralysis and 650,000 deaths since 1988. With a 99% drop in infections since the eradication effort began, one final push is all that is needed to ensure that polio will never paralyze another child. Disease eradication is one public health effort that benefits all of humanity and challenges us to work together as a global community. Beyond eliminating specific diseases, eradication programs benefit local populations by improving health infrastructure. For example, Nigeria recently used facilities and personnel from their polio eradication program to effectively control an Ebola outbreak. Furthermore, Globalization and international travel means that even a single infection anywhere in the world can potentially spread to other regions. By helping to protect others, we help to protect ourselves. Disease eradication is the ultimate gift we can give to everyone alive today, as well as all future generations of humanity. So, I hope you, you like the video, that it was easy to understand. Uh, so, let's say it's, uh, let's come back again at 16.42. Okay, then you have time to have a glass of water. See you then.
Hello, everybody. We're back from the from the break. So, could you please give me a thumbs up if you're here back? Yes, please. In the emojis you find here, for example, I am back. Yeah, Mary's back. Everybody's back. Okay, great. Chloe, Rinche, Mara, Alexia. Good. Nice that you're back. So, let's keep talking about this. Lisbeth, great. Uh, let's go to the real business now. What makes it possible, the eradication of human disease? We said that in some cases it is possible, maybe in other, others not, maybe in other cases it's uh, depending on the disease, it can be a little bit more difficult. But what makes it possible? Do we know what, it, uh, what makes it possible? Yes, we do. We have, at least we have a, a very good idea. Um, and for example, we need to ask some questions about the disease. The disease first must be well studied, how it is transmitted. Is it limited to humans? Is there an animal reservoir or a vector, for example? Is it transmitted by a mosquito? Is it uh, transmitted by a bat? Can it be transmitted by a monkey, etc.? Uh, are there dogs as reservoirs, etc., and etc.? Is the limited, the limit, uh, the persistent in the environment limited? For example, you can have a disease that can survive in the environment for 10 years. It will have much more chances to infect you than if the survival is 10 seconds, for example. So we need to know everything that is possible to know, uh, the maximum that we can about the disease and the pathogen itself. Is there an absence of long-term career state, for example, Maybe uh, a career a person is a, a person that has the disease but doesn't show symptoms. So you don't know that the person is sick. For example, if you, we are talking about HIV, a person can be infecting other people for years and years without knowing, in fact, that, 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 that this person has HIV. In the case of COVID, for example, you can be for you can be an asymptomatic. Uh, person that you don't have symptoms but you still can transmit. You can transmit just before you develop the symptoms. So uh, if you don't have this, then it's easier to control. Uh, is there long-term immunity from infections? Once you get the disease, can you get it again? When? Is it after a month, after six months, after five years, after 10 years or never more? Is this uh, for the vaccination the, the same? Does it confirm in immunity so one talks to the other because the vaccine will mimic the disease in your body without giving you the disease, but giving you the immunity. But is this immunity long term or short term? Is this for a month, six months, one year, 10 years, 20 years? Herd immunity prevents the perpetuation of an epidemic, meaning if once the people get the disease or get the, vaccina the vaccination for the disease, can they still transmit? So this is an important question. I guess we are all, uh, you are all um, now knowledgeable about all these questions because of the COVID situation. This is why I chose this topic, because I guess we are all uh, talking about these things. Is this a, a disease that is, uh, has an easy diagnostic? For example, in the case of smallpox, you see the person uh, with the, the skin uh, full of lesions and you're not going to approach that person. This was, um, in fact, this prevented many more deaths all over the world. So if you see a person with a disease, you can easily identify that person. You don't need to do any test, you don't need any uh, specialist to do the test, any examination, you just look at the person and you know that the person has that disease. So if you have that situation, like in smallpox, it's very easy to get away from that person. But in other diseases, you cannot say if the person is sick or not, or you need an exam or you need to go uh, to a hospital, or whatever. What makes this makes things more difficult? Uh, is the vaccination effective post exposure? So is it effective that you got the vaccination and you're not going to be sick afterwards? Is there a political and financial support? This is very important that we also probably notice uh, from different countries and 
uh, from what is happening from COVID-19 because if you know everything from science on how to do it but the politicians don't want to do it it's a bit difficult if there is no financial support for research and also for implementing the policies it's also very difficult so smallpox answered yes for all of these questions and a bit more here are just a few examples yeah so then it was very good that smallpox was chosen to be a good candidate to, uh, to, for being eradicated. It was not lucky, it was knowledge. And we have a list of diseases that are on the line, on the queue, to be uh, eradicated. One thing that is important also is that you watch in the video, elimination is different from eradication just because elimination means that you, the disease doesn't exist in that specific geographic area. It's a proof of concept for eradication. If you can eliminate a disease from one country, then it's a proof of concept that you can eliminate from other countries and then worldwide. So these diseases, uh, it was about the same time, if I'm not mistaken, ever, it's a very good question if you have these guiding questions before or after. If I'm not mistaken, it was on the 50s, on the 60s, at least some of these questions were made. Uh, and then this is why smallpox was chosen. Yeah, I think it was a little bit of lucky also. So I'm going to give you here two examples of diseases in this list that I got for you. Poliomyelitis, polio, that uh, it's caused by a virus and it causes paralysis in 2 to 5% of children that get the virus. In adults, um, it's about 15 to 30% chances of dying, oh sorry, uh, 2 to 5% of the children will die if they get polio. A large amount, I think it's 30 to 40 percent will get paralysis and adults if you're an adult and you get polio you have 15 to 30 percent chances of dying but it's a good candidate for uh, uh, being eradicated and in fact as you saw in the video we are almost there we also from research from studying the cycle of the parasite and the way that the disease is spread and everything else we can also um, tell people how uh, inform policymakers how you can eradicate or eliminate the disease and in the case of the polio is via vaccination. So the first disease that was eradicated, you can see in the list, smallpox, was eradicated using vaccination, only using vaccination. The in the past that was an animal disease, I told you that was eradicated, was sanitary measures, so hygiene, and separating the animals that were sick and vaccination. So depending on the disease, you can see that you have different ways to eradicate that disease, but vaccines are by far the most important tool that we ever have for uh, elimination or controlling or eradication of a disease. So the case of polio here, uh, in 2017, in green, these are all the countries that are uh, certified by the World Health, Health Organization as polio-free. In these countries, polio was eliminated, okay? In yellow is a uh, polio fever not certified, and we only have three countries all over the globe that you still have a few cases of polio. For missiles, the situation is similar. We are kind of close for elimination, not as close as polio. The fatality, if you get uh, missiles, you die in 15% of the cases. And the way to tackle this disease is also due to vaccination. But if we are going to get there, these days is a bit difficult to say because we have also some issues with this. For example, even here in the Netherlands in 2013, we had a very big outbreak of missiles. It was controlled in the country. It was about to be eliminated, but people uh, decided not to take the vaccines. And then we have a, now a very serious outbreak 
in the Netherlands of missiles in 2013. And this is happening in many developed countries, which leads to the uh, World Health Organization to declare in 2019 that vaccine hesitancy, people that refuse to take a vaccination for any disease, they pose a threat to public health. They pose a threat, meaning that everything that we conquer so far in means of elimination or eradication of diseases can be jeopardized by people that are not taking the vaccines. So, but what if a disease cannot be eradicated or eliminated? What would you do? Then you would try to control locally. Then you need to uh, have interventions that will never stop. For example, vaccine the population against something every year or controlling hygiene, uh, hygiene, etc. So it would be uh, another way to decrease the deaths, but then uh, you're not going to eliminate, you're not going to eradicate the disease. It's not possible, but you can still control it. And I would like to ask you to answer this uh, last poll because before we go to the activity, do you think that is a potential for the eradication of HIV and COVID-19? Yes or no? Very good. I can see answers here. Some people that are very hopeful in science, some other not so much. Very good. I can see people are very positive and some people are not so much. So seven people think it is possible. <laughs> you promise, Mara. Okay. <laughs> and three people are not. Well, let's try to answer this. I'm going to give, we have only uh, five more minutes. If we try to just check this activity. Yeah, it's too, uh, yes, I agree. I'm just going to share with you, it's too, we don't have enough time to divide you in smaller groups and discuss it, but uh, I will give you then the answers. I am sorry to tell you positive people that the answer is no for both HIV and for COVID. Should we have a few seconds to think about it? Yeah, how do you feel about it? If we go through the list of questions, a few questions, smallpox here, as I told you, answered yes for all the questions, yes, and the eradication is possible. HIV and COVID basically answer no for all the questions or a maybe or we don't know yet. So it is not possible. The answer for this disease is, this disease is to be, that they are going to be kept under control. Are there any questions or comments? I don't think we can be sure because you never know what might be achieved. Yes, you're right, Georgia. But with the technology we have now, and uh, the science, the science behind it, at the moment, it is not possible. Who knows what the future will bring? That's good that you are also positive. I'm not so positive in these uh, two cases, but uh, I'm glad that you are. So, and thank you very much for being here. If you have any other questions, we still have a few more minutes. If not, I hope to see you at UCG soon. Thank you, Mara.